What's happening, John Long, guys? Welcome back to Hitman, Codename 47. This is Chapter 10, and when we last left off, we had did the Traditions of the Trade, the original mission there. Didn't go quite as expected, but we managed to salvage it for most of the part. So now we're on to the next mission, which is in Rotterdam. Now this mission and the next mission were actually... They were redone, but it was made into one mission. So in contracts, I think there was a couple different missions. But, um, if I remember correctly, I think there was two different missions at least. Anyways, though, the two missions here were one mission. So the mission in contracts where we had to plant the GPS tracker on the car and then follow the car to the, the uh, ship. And you had to pass through like a police station. That first part where you plant the tracker on the car is one mission and then the ship is another mission. Now these two missions I did not like and I still don't. They're really big. They're really open there's not a whole lot to it and they're not the funnest but obviously we're gonna play them anyways welcome to rotterdam your next target is the man who supplied lee hong and pablo with weapons the notorious gunner gun runner sorry ab or arkaj jerkov aka boris boris is hiding on a ship somewhere in the harbor of rotterdam but we do not know the exact location we have information that a local dutch gang has arranged to purchase some of boris's merchandise by tracking them, we might be able to locate the ship. Our intelligence department has stumbled across a weird fact that you should know. It seems that Lee Hong, Boris France, Fuchs, and Pablo all served in the French Legion together. If that is coincidence, it is one weird coincidence. Diana Burnwood, Controller, The Agency. Place GPS tracker in the gang car, move GPS tracker to the money suitcase, and give the suitcase to Ivan. 50 grand upon completion. The Dutch gang is meeting with Ivan somewhere in the harbor area. We do not know exactly where. The gang's hideout places a small strip joint. Place a GPS transmitter in the gang's car and follow the car to the meeting place. Eliminate all the gang members at the meeting before Ivan shows up. Make sure Ivan does not see any dead bodies. He is very cautious and will abort the meeting at any uh, suspicious sign. Pick up the GPS transmitter from the car and place it in the suitcase carrying the money for Ivan. Make sure Ivan picks up the suitcase. Hopefully Ivan will return straight to Boris with the money, revealing his hideout to us. Now, I don't think you actually have to hide every body at the place you kill. I think they just kind of say it as like, as like to add immersion to the story, but I don't think you actually have to. Ivan Zalvin Zalvinich is about 50 years old, 5'2 and 180 pounds, sturdy and composed, a real hardcore criminal. We don't have to kill him. We just have to know that that's him. So this is the map here. Now... Like I said, it's pretty big, it's pretty expensive, pretty open, and super annoying. It's so pretty much what's going to happen here is there's a train going on by, and we have to use the train to get into one of the points. So it's either going to be one, two, or three. I've never had it go there, but I think it can go there too. Now what we have to do is we have to head over here, and this is where there's a strip club. So we go in the strip club, get the dancer to strap the guy, we put a GPS, and we follow the GPS to wherever it is. And then wherever it happens to go, so say it goes here, we have to rearrange this train by means of the tracks so that it will crash through great gates and let us in. Ooh, we actually have a good supply of things we can buy. So we have to take the GPS stuff. I'm going to take body armor because, you know. Um, We'll take the knife. And I think we'll take this with full ammo. And that should be it. Hmm. Rotterdam Harbor. It's not exactly a tourist resort. But then again, I'm not here for a vacation either. Now, people will find his body eventually. But for now, we're just going to hope that they don't. We might be back here quick enough to kill the guy that um, will see it. I'm also going to switch the tracks right now, because in any scenario, I'm going to need the train to head this way. And the train doesn't get stuck anywhere, so it will plow through gates, but it will still be on a continuous loop, so you can follow it. Drink Kinky Cola. So that's the guy we have to distract. If you try to put the GPS tracker on the car without distracting him, then he automatically sees it. She'll come right back as soon as you enter the dressing room. So 
we just talk to her? Hi, I'm Sandy. What can I do for you? I have this guy watching my car out front. How about treating him to a good time on my account? Now I'm disappointed. I thought you were my date. No. Now where's this friend of yours? Outside. I'll be there in 20 seconds. I love how he just, he's short and concise. She's like, I thought you'd be my date. No. Where's your friend? Outside. It's like, okay. Hello, handsome. How about some company? Uh, well, actually, I, uh... Come on. Let's play a little game. Um, okay. I, I guess I can leave the car and attend it for a few minutes. So as soon as he turns to face that way is when I'll attach the GPS transmitter just so that they don't see me. There. And basically, all I have to do is wait till they're finished and then follow the car. While I wait... Take out this guy right now. I was gonna take him out with the knife, but I guess not, eh? He should be finishing up sometime shortly. Cool. cool. So now we just wait for him and his friend to jump in the car and then we follow the car. There's his friend there. You know what these... Well, no, I shouldn't say sprites, but you know what these character models remind me of? Siphon Filter. If you guys ever played that game, let me know in the comments below. That was a great game. I absolutely loved it. I only played... I want to say I only played the first two. I don't think I've played anything else past that, but I know I've played the first two for sure. So as you can see, the train's already been through here. But yeah, no, in any case, it's a great game. Like I said, I would definitely recommend uh, checking it out if you guys haven't. It was on PlayStation 1, but I'm sure you can find emulator somewhere or even just find the game itself. So we're going to wait here until they go in so that I can take out the dogs out front now you don't have to take all the dogs out around the building i've seen that too you don't have to take the three that will see you from the front which are one two and three and for whatever reason ivan doesn't care about the dogs bodies it's just if he sees any uh people bodies all right so here we're gonna start the fun There's one more. Nope. Cool. So now I just want to drag them out of the way. Like I said, I'm almost positive he doesn't care if they're here or not, but just to be safe. Thought I heard a door. I hear something. So we got to get the GPS tracker from here. I don't know what that noise is, but it's annoying. The, well, it's scaring the crap out of me, to be honest. Keep thinking it's a person. Just pick this up. Uh, transmitter. It just shoves it in on the top there. So, you know, as soon as they open it, they can see it. And ideally, what you'd want to do is come up uh, into this place 
on the exit up there. That way, most of the bodies would be on the other side. Because uh, Ivan will always come in on the side where the briefcase is. So the briefcase was on this side, which means he'll come in on this side. So as long as the bodies are hidden from plain sight from wherever the briefcase could be seen, then you don't have to worry about much else. He doesn't care about blood stains either, so. Beat noise, that's what it is, but it's still like I said, it scares the fuck out of me. I hear it and I keep thinking that someone's like coming. One minute. So now, pretty much now, I just have to sit here and wait for uh, Ivan. I mean, while I wait, I can open this up and we'll see him pull up. <clears throat> yeah, no, this mission, it's just, there's no, I don't want to say no stealthy option, because like I said, I'm not going for stealth playthroughs in this game, because there's no raiding, and I know for a fact that some of the missions, it's just impossible, but, um, this is one of the missions that make me fucking cat one of the missions that make me realize how they originally went for like an action shooter type game and then eventually evolved it into a stealther stealther stealth game just through means of obviously you know self-improvement whatnot because some levels you can definitely feel more stealth capabilities and other levels like this you don't just because I think they weren't sure with the genre at first, because there was no other games like this at the time that was doing this. I mean, arguably you could say, what was it called? Manhunt? Manhunter? Something like that. But even then still. I have your money here. Where are my weapons? <clears throat> your merchandise can be collected in the appointed warehouse. The samples look promising. Let's do business again sometime. I want my money. Give it to me. Okay, okay, calm down. Here it is. And then pretty much as soon as he gets into the uh, the limo and drives off, that's the end of the mission. We don't have to do anything else. We actually can see him in the next mission. Funny enough. Let's give it a second and the mission will end. This mission went pretty much how I expected it to go. Um, like I said, the location is random, but, uh, besides that, I mean, there's nothing else you can do in this mission besides pretty much what I did, so. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, for me on this day, comment down below, don't subscribe, and share, it really helps me out. Thank you guys for watching, I'll see you later, bye.